All right, you knew it was coming earlier rather than later. Power ranking episode two, we are looking at the one, the only, the summon Zon. And before I start, if you've seen my dozen videos on this class, I love it. To be honest, these power rankings are biased towards the things that I care about. So you can expect the summons on to score pretty well here. I enjoy classes that do it all, or do the most you can in Diablo 2. To paraphrase Friedrich Nietzsche crudely and out of context, classes that do one thing are disgusting little creatures, worthy of content. I've been lucky enough to have my summons on sh showcased for the community, spreading the gospel of summons on as the one true summoner. Instead of being a hogging star solo damager, or the beta quote-unquote leader of minions, the summons on charges into battle with her minions, and let's not call them minions. They are our allies and comrades in the fight against evil, zealotry, and stupid-ass YouTube comments. And this is by design. Check it out. This is the build that I had in mind in Season 1, the thing I designed. And the, the concept behind it was it, it was supposed to be a summoner that fights with its summons, if that makes sense. Like, I didn't I didn't want to just make another summoner. I wanted to make a summoner that feels different, you know? And so, uh, the concept behind this build was a summoner that also fights with its summons. So, this is a singularly unique class in PD2, and for that it will always be my favorite. Let's get into it. Single target. Like most summoners, your single target damage is phenomenal, especially since your damage is coming from Strafe, which, when maxed out, provides over 200% enhanced damage and massive attack rating boosts. Uh, you don't have the summoner stomp ability of, say, a Necro, though you will next season with the uh, Joust um, Spear on your Switch, but you can direct the Valks to attack a target where your Cursor is. However, on a singled-out boss, you have three, maybe four Valks at 1,200 to 1,400 enhanced damage, two to 3k damage decoys using Strafe, and your own Strafe damage. Um, that's a lot. We will deduct some points for the lack of ability to direct the damage in a large pack, but oddly enough, this class is a boss killer, and that's how I use it in group play. 8 out of 5, 8.5 out of 10 here. I'm um, AoE. Um, Sevenhawk, who might have been one of my first subs, um, said AoE is basically clear speed in maps. Um, that is true, but I want to keep this metric as a true AoE. AO, I want to keep this metric as a true AoE ability, because we can decipher glass cannons from true tanks like the summons on by splitting those categories. So the summons on can't AoE as well as a multi-shot, but depending on your build, the Demon Machine provides damn near the same levels of AoE at high gear levels, and I have to take into consideration the cheapness of going full summons early when you gear up. I mean, even with just basic plus skills, you can easily reach 45 level summons and push it higher than 50 with skill rings and corruptions, which looks something like this. Yeah, that's without a demon machine. It's it's a 9 out of 10 on AoE. It's really good, no matter how you build it. So, side note, whenever someone says in the comments, why didn't you just go with the full summons build? I just like the one where I get to do more damage. You can build this either way. Wonderful class. Um, safety. Uh, I cannot understate this. This is the safest class to play in the game. Period. The only time I've had to run seriously and kite is on a juiced throne of insanity with maidens that were double buffed by conk and fanaticism. I mean, during the regular season, you can forgo FCR and get a coil for even more slowy goodness on the bad guys. As long as you have Valks up and three decoys evenly spread into the pack you're killing, you will never be touched. You can't die on this class with anything other than your own stupidity. I get that this class has slowly ramped up in popularity as I've pumped out video after video on how great it is, but the safety of this class, it needs a nerf. I'd honestly rank this as 11 out of 10, but we'll be fair. This is a 10 out of 10. It's a perfect safety class. Ubers. Um, again, if we think of the top uber killing classes, like a decked out smiter, the summons on does literally just as well. I'm not kidding. First, Bale and Diablo have a massive hard-on for the decoys to the point they will ignore everything on the map if one is up, so there's an easy kite strategy of just keeping the decoys in front of them. 
Vox, and you behind them and swing away. You're probably using Faith on a Merc, which can be put on yourself for Ubers to keep fanaticism up the whole time as well. It's not as easy on your heart rate sometimes, but when done right, you can lock Ubers into place using mana potions. Mana potions. You don't even need to stock up on Rejuves for Ubers. I often just bring 3 to 1 mana to health potions for them and go through a belt on a sloppy run. I mean, this is a 10 out of 10. It, it's used to just rape the Ubers early every season. Um, gearing ease. Alright, we, we do have to bring the bad girl back down to earth here. Gearing can be as simple as using solo self-found gear that no one wants, because you have items with uh, IAS and FCR, well who uses them except for you? Um, it can also ramp up to being an unadulterated bitch to get gear, because one guy has the best item for you on the server that only you and four other people running this class want. I was pulling my hair out dealing with the offers crowd on summons on circles last season. At the same time, a near worthless pair of FCR passive all res gloves got tossed to me from a friend the second week of the season and I never switched them out. I mean, your reliance on trading for obscure items like FCR passive circlets really counteracts how easy it is to get passive skillers for pulls. Um, it does start out easy though. Um, one of the things is your best armor um, slot if you're going for the heavy summons build is literally the Zahn rune ward armor that gives you an extra Valk. I mean, talk about cheap. Um, still, it's 4 to 10 here. It's pretty hard to gear. Playstyle ease. I have to say the playstyle is unique for the summons on. It's not going to be for everyone. And a lot of people don't like stopping to drop decoys, managing your summons, and positioning yourself to maximize pierce from strafing into a group. Um, if you're spreading out your strafe and hitting one monster in an arc, it's not as good as if you line them all up and put the strafe through them, so you have to think about it. Um, and there is a lot of thinking, and I love that personally. I, I can't say that it's really hard, however. I mean, I saw Senpai figure it out for the most part on his showcase stream in about 10 minutes. It wasn't optimally fast like I run it, but he got the sense down, and once you start to realize that you're using your high damage decoys as blockers, that's just the key to running this class. There are walls that shoot out a lot of damage, that's how you stay so safe. So, repeating himself, he said, the playstyle is unique, requires some thinking, but it's not that difficult in and of itself, even if it's not for everyone. A 7 out of 10 on the ease of the playstyle. So that gives us a final result of 52.5 points out of 60, which is spot on. That's exactly how I feel about the class, with most of those lost on how gearing works, by the way, for a total score of 8.75 out of 10. Um, I really think that highly of this class. I asked for buffs to the Valk's elemental damage because they have a damn synergy for it that isn't used, but this class doesn't need an overall damage buff at all, and I'm gonna fucking regret saying this, aren't I, Senpai? It probably needs a tankiness nerf. This is just a phenomenal class for anyone wanting to map, do ubers, be safe, and clear well. I, I know I've just jacked the price of my gear next season depending on how popular this video gets, but I don't care. I, I won't leave her ever. She is mine, I love her, and I hope you give her a shot sometime in the future. Hey guys. That normal difficulty? No, this is hell mode. <laughs> Summon Zons aren't as weak as people think they are. Uh, I found them quite strong. The playstyle is a little annoying, though, with constant decoy casting and Vox still being derpy. Yeah, but, I mean, you can make the same argument with traps, right? Traps uh, are constant trap spawning, right? It's kind of just the playstyle. It's, it's basically like a trap zone meets a boson. If we're, like, really... It's... Okay, I guess I should say it's trap zone meets druid summoner in the sense that, like, you summon a couple of big tanky things meets... Is on. <laughs> it's like right, traditional summoner meets Trapson meets Boson. <laughs> <laughs>